and there'll be power-ups, which will come float by that you have to pick up as chemotherapy pills. So the win-lose scenario is if you win, you win. You defeat king cancer, you defeat the cancer cells. However, it gets a little bit sensitive when you lose. We didn't want to come up with a thing that says, you know, you lost or you died, because that's a very uh, demotivational message to send to children, especially those that are affected by cancer. If they're relating that game to what's going on in their body, we didn't want to say you died because to them they might think, oh no, I'm going to die. So we wanted to just kind of give it a, you know, it's good, you had a good run, but let's try it again. So influences and resources. Um, a lot of the influences resources we found online, but also some of them we knew personally. In the upper uh, left-hand corner is a game called Remission, which was developed by Hope Lab in San Francisco. Their focus is on cancer-based games as well. In the upper uh, right-hand corner is Remission 2. So they've developed a bunch of games. This is actually, they're on their seventh right now. Um, and they have the same exact message. Their target audience is a little bit older, but the gameplay is very similar to what we're doing. We also looked at Fruit Ninja, a very popular video game, mainly for the hand motions. Um, we looked at a game called Child of Eden, which is the lower left-hand corner, because we like the tunnel shape and the different colors. We also looked to Dr. Adam Casalis and Dr. Barbara Bombeck from Roswell Park. I had Dr. Bombeck when I was going through chemotherapy, and Dr. Casalis helped us a lot with the educational aspects, and he will be helping us when we go to install it in Roswell. And also, I was actually in talks with one of the designers of Remission and Remission 2, uh, Austin Harley from Hope Lab. So these are just some early sketches and models of the game. Um, here it shows kind of a tunnel, and you're going in a T-Fighter spaceship to go through the different cancer cells. And the last part is a boss battle. Those are just some early mock-ups of the different interfaces and different styles we were going to go with. Originally, we were thinking of going with a third-person perspective, but in the end, we decided to go with a first-person perspective. These are just some sketches that I did of the white cell and the cancer cells in the boss <laughs> battle. <laughs> And these are just some early models, uh, very, very basic, of the cancer cell, chemotherapy, and the white blood cell. Yeah, these are more uh, early sketches. Um, just some sketches for what the user interface will be like. Uh, the screen that you, the start screen, menu screen, where you actually select to start game or help options or anything like that. And then um, in the bottom left-hand corner uh, is a sketch of what we want the game view to look like, so that's an in-game view, and then on the right side is uh, the boss, King Cancer. These are some more early models. Um, Josh did definitely a lot of these. We'll try and go over the interface. If we had time, we were going to come up with different difficulty levels, because if there's a, an, uh, an older individual playing the game, they might want the challenge. Um, but overall, we're going to stick with somewhat easy factors. We also have a spaceship. Um, cockpit, because we were thinking of, you know, your inner spaceship might look through a cockpit with different buttons. A uh, chemotherapy pill, and just kind of going around the curve of uh, the main environment, which is within the bloodstream. She's just being modest. She contributed way more than me <laughs> in terms of assets. <laughs> we both were working on uh, some modeling, but she's doing a great job, especially with um, the bloodstream tunnel and animating that and making, making the game just look like it's working. <laughs> so this is what some of the assets look like now. We've got a uh, cancer cell, but there's two of them connected together. We've got a single cancer cell, and we have the white blood cell. This is uh, one of Josh's creations, um, the T-Fighter spaceship. So we kind of joke because it looks like a lowercase t. Um, mm -hmm. And then there's the cockpit on the inside as well. So what is left? We have to add sound. We have to finish the functionality with the death of the cancer cells and the boss battle, and we have to create a menu screen. Other than that, we are looking to install it in Roswell hopefully soon. We're setting up an appointment with Dr. Casalis over there to get it installed. Um, and another point I wanted to make that I failed to mention in the beginning is that because the game is focused on cancer, but there's so many different types, we wanted to focus on one aspect specifically of cancer that might apply to multiple kinds. Um, so we focus on the process of metastasis, which is when cancer spreads to other parts of the body. That's why a lot of the cells are seen in the bloodstream, because it's kind of like a neutral ground 
that a lot of cancer stages unfortunately could go to. Um, so in that way, it's kind of getting the audience open to different types of cancer rather than one specific kind. And of course, she has m m far more experience with um, the concept of cancer than I do. And, uh, but, as she said, there are many different kinds of cancers, so this was also a challenge to like, figure out how to approach this because uh, we want it to be educational, but we also want it to be a fun experience, and we don't want the educational aspect of it to take away from the fun and the universality of it. So we want it to apply to many different, anyone who has cancer, but how do you do that when different people have different needs or different are undergoing different treatments? And taking all this into consideration, we decided to take an approach that was a little more generic and implemented, you know, some chemo, some radiation, just a wide variety of treatments and concepts of cancer without actually targeting one person too specifically. So now we're going to try doing a demo of our game. Does anybody have any questions? You're good. Because PJ gets everything set up. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it hugely. Um, just like Nut Wars, a lot of the coding for games like this, we just haven't learned yet in class. We haven't had the experience of uh, doing that yet. So we've been focusing on a lot of the asset work. PJ's been uh, helping us greatly with a lot of the coding. Although what's left coding-wise, we can definitely do. Um, but with the motion capture, it's something that I have not been familiar with, neither has Josh, um, a little bit with this other game called Grab and Jump. But it's so new to us that we don't know exactly how to approach it. So PJ has been not very nice in helping us with it. So um, PJ could explain more about <laughs> More it, of the basics of the coding. <laughs> but the basic way that it works, uh, we have cancer cells uh, generated randomly. So anywhere within the boundaries of the screen. And as they approach you, uh, Brianna did a nice animation that would have them uh, grow and train. Yes. So it looks like they're alive, and uh, as they approach, you want to try and shoot them down using your targeting system, uh, which is basically just your hands and the crosshairs on screen. After they pass the field of view, then they will reset and respawn again. And this was also an interesting point because here uh, we took an approach, or have we, is it finally implemented or once they shrink, once they shrink, they re uh, reappear. Yes. So, all right, so, um, to help motivate the kids, if they hit the cancer cell, it will shrink. And so eventually it will shrink so much that, you know, it's gone. But if they don't shrink it all the way before it passes uh, the field of view, it will then reappear in front of the camera again. And then they'll be able to continue their treatment of this cancer. A lot, we didn't know exactly how to go about actually making um, what the cancer cells look like and how they move. And that was actually uh, from Dr. Bombeck. She actually described cancer cells as moving as if they were kind of breathing in and out. So that's what we focus on a lot with the animation. And as um, one of you guys comes up and uh, tries out the demo, um, you'll see that if you defeat a cancer cell and it shrinks completely, the health bar, which is the yellow part, will move over um, this way. And then if you don't completely defeat a cancer cell, and it passes by the screen, the green bar moves that way. So we're kind of implementing like a tug of war between health and cancer. So you just gotta, it takes a second to wave the hand around. <laughs> there we go. So the green uh, circle is kind of another way to say this is the radiation, right? <laughs> Josh, are you too tall? That's kind of great. It takes a lot of weight. Oh, so to actually get it to move takes a little bit. <laughs> but again, we've still got a little bit of time to polish this up. <laughs> do you want to do that? Want me to try it? I'm shorter. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it gets confusing when there are a lot of people in the room. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and one of the reasons that it might not pick up my hand right now is because. 
is because we've got, as you can see in the bottom right hand corner, a lot of people within here. So the space is not optimal. But as long as you saw the little green ray, that's what that is. There, there it is. Okay. Um, that's it. Everyone else don't move. Okay. <laughs> so as you see, as I move over the cancer cells and it gets detected, they shrink. And if you focus on that, you'll see that the health bar just moves slightly based on the size of the cancer cell. Now, if I were to let it go, and even though it's still tracking my hand, and let the cancer cells pass by the camera, the health bar would change slightly. And it's based on, which there it goes to. <laughs> um, the movement of the health bar is based on the size of the cancer cells. So if you didn't defeat a big cancer cell, then the movement will be more severe than if you did defeat um, a shrunken cancer cell, which I have both my hands up, which is why I was getting confused. <laughs> which actually PJ's children were playing with it last night and enjoyed it, which is always good. <laughs> <laughs> yes, test subjects. So, what we're going to implement is um, once you defeat a certain number of cancer cells, King Cancer will show up, which we're currently working on. Um, Josh is doing a wonderful job with the actual asset of King Cancer. Um, and then once you defeat him, we'll go to windscreen. Um, and if you don't defeat a certain number of cancer cells, we'll go to not a lose screen, but uh, kind of a try again sequence. Anyone else like to try before we wrap up here today? Go give it a shot. All right. It's going to keep tracking me. It's lucky. I've never used it <laughs> All right. before. So. so wave one of your hands. It might take a second because it took me a while just because there's a lot of other people in the room. Why don't you start with Simple, people are still not used 
exclude this kind of interaction in the world. And that's still around for uh, 40 years now. Uh, the interaction is still, as you can see, rather two dimensional.